never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. <laughs> Oh, good morning, everybody. It is Friday, and it is uh, it's the beginning of an interesting weekend because tomorrow's Saturday, and there's a big event going on. And that's repeating. There's the fuck up market. It's going to happen. Ah, uh, they can't hear you guys. They can't. I got Marcus and, and Dennis with me today. Good morning, everybody. I'm tired. I'm just gonna start there. I don't. I lots of good stuffs happening. Lots of stuffs happening. Uh, and I'm tired. And uh, and I don't have stuff really good together today. And uh, I was really excited about We the People. Paul Gene Swearinger did a great job. And thank you, Alan Parker, for catching my. Massive error. We're going to talk about that too. That's another part of what's going on right now. Uh, but I want to say good morning to everybody because we've got some really exciting things happening. Uh, and and uh, we'll talk about that, the changes that are going to need to happen, and the changes that are happening that are really cool. Uh, yeah. So good morning. Good morning. Uh, Lyle, uh, uh, Lyle, Lily, I get that mixed up all the time. Really sorry. Uh, Stock Post, Topps, Derby, Springfield, John Warren, Jonathan. A uh, real jingy cat. How you doing, Darcy? Thank you for making that uh, that clip for uh, Apology. That was really a nice clip. I like what you did there. Thank you for that. Um, it, that's working together. That's what it takes, right? Really appreciate that. Uh, Kendra, good morning. Robert, Janine, how are you? How are you? Dennis, I guess. <laughs> yes, we the people was great. Thank you guys and Bev. All right, so before I bring Dennis and Marcus on, I want to just yeah. The, the cover, right? The cover is hagfish. We got we got to talk about this. this. This is cool. That's a real slimy. We'll, we'll run the event in two seconds, or we'll run the, the video in two seconds. That that really happened, all right? Like a truck full of hagfish slime eels rolled over on the Pacific Highway 101 in Oregon, dumped on this car, and the car got slimed. If you're not familiar, hagfish are really kind of interesting. They uh, they uh, uh, have a skull, but no spine. They're the only creature that we know of that have that, a skull with no spine. Other than, like, Marco Rubio, a few other people. Haven't they documented that? Just thinking about that. Maybe the hagfish is the only waterborne creature that we're aware of that has a skull with no spine. We definitely know of many politicians that way, don't we? Marcus, are you coloring? Sounds like somebody's coloring. Sorry. That's quite all right. <laughs> Think, be creative, sorry. That's great. Do you know who eats slime eels? They're going over to Korea. I had no idea they really have this thing for them over there. Um, I'm glad that that's not something I was raised on. I mean, I'm sure they're great, but no. And the slime is really kind of cool. They, at first, they just thought it was a, a, a you know, protective thing, a way for the eel to turn. It, it basically turns itself into a knot, and it can get away from its predator that way. But it also, the slime also clogs or stops other fish's gills from intaking oxygen. So it has a dual purpose. It's really kind of cool. Other than just being just incredibly gross to human beings. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, we have two Germans with us this morning. Let's say hello. Marcus is busy doing something in a scrapbook. Let's start with the, the smoking German, Dennis. Good morning, Dennis. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful week to, to today. And yeah, let's start with the show, but I'm really curious what Mark Marcus was preparing there. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> yeah, what, what were you doing, Marcus? What was that? You're on camera. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't talk? One minute? Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. Marcus 
just giving us some Kellyanne Conway. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> America. America. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Thank, thank you. Katie was asking about that, actually, the proper spelling and, and enunciation. <laughs> Good morning, guys. <laughs> that was lovely, Mark. Thank you very much for that. Uh, appreciate that. I don't want double tennis. Very good. There we go. I got all three of you on there. Here we are. Good morning, everybody. Everything's okay. too loud here. So yeah, that was funny. That was hilarious. Referencing Kellyanne Conway. I didn't even catch that. I just saw I'm like this is what we've devolved to. Is somebody holding up cards? The press. To I, I managed uh, a couple of days ago, a few days ago, uh, to watch the whole interview with Chris Cuomo and Kellyanne Conway. Really? And I, I don't know which, uh, if my eyes or my ears bleed it more. <laughs> nice. Nice. I missed it. I missed it. We'll get Marcus to make a meme from, from Germans. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll get a meme out there. We'll, mm. I'll cut that out. That was very nice. Good morning. <laughs> Just show that. <laughs> You called the FCC today. Very nice. Thank you, buddy. Chat, so many dead fish everywhere, polluted water and overfishing. Yes, there are so many dead fish everywhere. That's lovely. <laughs> the French can have Trump. The French do not want Trump. After what he said yesterday. And they're trying to pass it off like he was complimenting, he was talking to Macron. Well, we're going to get into that, because that, but that's the end of the show. It's actually, the song today is perfect. I don't think they really knew how perfect of a song they picked uh, to, to sit down and you'll, you'll see. If you guys know, all the links are in the description. Look in the description of this event and look at those links because that's uh, that's where everything is. I try to cite all the sources. They're the people doing the hard work. Right? We're just referencing the material. So please visit those sites, share that material, and help us spread good information. Next Wednesday get into some events. Next Wednesday, we the people meet Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yay! She's running in New York against some corporate Republican guy, I'm pretty sure. Joseph Crowley. Joseph Crowley. See, you know more. Marcus, Marcus knows more about this shit than I do. Marcus, you have to be on the, online that day. I, I kept my promise and was, was live to call a uh, surgeon. Huh? So, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> Dennis, are you, are you kidding, man? It would be 4 o'clock in the morning, and of course I will be around. <laughs> you crazy Germans. You crazy Germans, you guys. Well, good. I would I'm never miss a chance to meet Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. All right, but no ogling, because that's what, that's what uh, Trump got in trouble I cannot, for. cannot promise this. <laughs> and, yes, she is in a good shape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but listen, listen. As long as you're not doing that as a representative of the state, you know, you're not the president of Germany, so, okay. I will be a perfect representative of the German and the German culture, of course. Now, what would Merkel yes, you know, say? Could you imagine Merkel coming after your ass for that? I'm going to smack you, Marcus. <laughs> I, would, I would like to have a talk with her, yes? If she would come around and have a talk with me, I'm always open for her. <laughs> All right. Only what, only what her... Uh, 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 Conversation concerns, of course. All right, all right, of I think course. We will probably end the discussion to to a couple of minutes because we would bash her with so many informations, and she would never be able to answer to all of that. So <laughs> maybe, maybe we, we will see. We will see when she comes around. All yeah, right. next week. Huh? Moving on. Next week. Next week, join us for We the People. We've got two Germans <laughs> that are very excited about the show. Apparently, uh, on Saturday, which would be tomorrow. Something that I have uh, completely neglected to connect. I, I failed to connect this event, the, the event on 715 with Bernie Sanders in Iowa and Scott Galindez with tomorrow, Saturday, until today. <laughs> but, but shit, that's tomorrow. Uh, another, another reason we're going to talk about too many things going on. Too many good things going on. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, so join us for that. I will start broadcast probably about 6.45 a.m. Pacific time. The event is supposed to start officially at 7 p.m. 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 9 a.m. Central time. 
and it opens up with uh, just a morning session. It's, it's, a, it's like a people summit in Iowa. This is from Protest to Power. Bernie Sanders is the main speaker. Alicia Garza is the opening keynote speaker uh, after they go through some, some, you know, hello to everybody. And she is one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter. As a matter of fact, what I, what I read, she came up with the slogan. So we're going to listen to her talk about a lot of stuff. And, that's, and she's doing one of the workshops, too, so that'll be cool. Starts at 7 a.m. proper. It's going to go till Bernie happens, which is about 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish. Um, I'll have to look at the – actually, I have this schedule in front of my face. Let's look at the schedule, everybody. There it is. So these are central times because we are actually coordinating with uh, Iowa CCI. Evan Berger and Scott Galindez, and we're gonna we're gonna try to bring. Uh, hang on, I'm just checking for. Uh, issues here. We're all doing good, right? We're all online and watching this. <laughs> Froze is saying she's having issues. Video says waiting for Upgo Media. What? Anyway, just making sure. It sounds like we got some technical issues. Hello, everybody again. Here's the time. So Central Time, Bernie Sanders keynote at 3 p.m. All right, so that'll be 1 p.m. Pacific. So join us for that. This is going to be cool. In between times, so I, I think I'll have at least one German, maybe two Germans will be hanging out with me here because it's a Saturday show. Maybe Katie okay, will drop by. Really, what we're doing is coordinating with these guys on, like, I'm, I'm, this live stream, our live stream is the live stream. So Scott Glindes is there with the solo unit. Our revolution is taking a raw feed our, our feed that is going to Political Revolution TV. Remember, Political Revolution TV, it can brought, it can stream again. Still don't know why it was shut down, but they, you know, they smacked me on the wrist and shut down streaming on Political Revolution TV. I'm using it again because it had 6,000 subscribers. It's a good base. Anyway, that's got the raw feed. Our revolution is going to pick up the raw feed and broadcast it on a page of theirs somewhere. So if you want to watch it there, we'll get that, and you can go watch Scott's feed. But Scott's feed is just going to be the main solo unit, and then when we go to the first workshop in the morning, he'll be pushing that, and then he'll come back for the afternoon event, and then he'll go to workshop two, and then he'll come out for the evening event, and that'll be Bernie Sanders, right? So, uh, and in between then, there's a lunch break where I think we're going to try to bring people in from the event and do interviews, and we're going to give me some videos to run and some content to look at and to have discussions. So this is, you know, this is what I've been trying to do for two years. I mean, we've been doing it for two years. And during the primaries, we did work in coordination with a lot of other groups. But everything kind of fell apart after the election. And this is the first time it's really seen to get back together and the groups are organized again. And we're talking and we're networking and it's happening. And this is, this is the best coordination I've ever had. So I'm just, I'm excited about it. So join us and please share the event and absolutely know that something's going to go wrong because it will. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> just, just know that the reason that I, I'm, uh, uh, I'm messing things up, we're going to talk about that, is because there's so many things going on now that are happening on the ground. So many other things. It's, it's, this is what I wanted. To have happen. This is what we wanted, right? We've worked really hard at this. Everybody in the Slack group, all the volunteers, is to, to see this expand to become something. Uh, my problem is I've reached my limit in how much I can hold at once without dropping balls, and I'm dropping. Okay, so uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about that next because I want to say thank you to Alan Parker. Even though you were a dick about it, um, you, you pointed out that I made a pretty huge mistake with the We the People show. I was really proud of We the People. Still am. But this is what happens when I try to do too many roles and I got so much going on and I built the rundown and, and I did research. I was actually happy with my research on uh, on Paula Jean Swearingen. And I thought I had my shit together and I was excited about all the things I practiced to, to say and to address and the way I thought the show was going to flow. And it all went really well and it was all really good except... When there was a little portion where I talked about West Virginia, but I showed Virginia stats and I showed a Virginia map and and I misquoted stats talking about West Virginia, but I was looking at Virginia stats, which is exactly what we're tired of. I mean, it's, it's a pretty grievous example of basically lying, right? I misinformed a bunch of people 
not intentionally. And then I had to go back and I put in a big correction. Wow, can you believe the idiot that put, you know, fucking map of Virginia in for West Virginia? And she was kind enough to just kind of work through it and tell. And the thing is, it, is it, what it, who it looks bad for is me and the channel. Paula Jean looks phenomenal. She did a great job. She answered questions. We got that great clip from Darcy, and it was phenomenal, right? And so that's when I get over the butt hurt because I was all thrilled with the work until that. And I go, you know what? It doesn't really matter. My personal view of the work, she got a good interview and she had a great job with it. But it makes me say, for up, for every we the people coming up, and I and I had I sent an email to Paula Jean's crew and brand new Congress, Justice Democrats. I said, I'm sorry. That's that's not the kind of stuff I, I you know, apologies. That doesn't, you know, help. And, and uh, you know, they understand people make mistakes. But it shows the limitation of, of where I'm at. That I need people to help build rundowns, do research. I, I'm, I'm at my limit. Especially because I, I'm now working to coordinate these events. Uh, we've got the pseudo-intellectuals on Sunday evening. And they're doing a great job building their shows. That's that's the, I just show up and we go through the thing and we do the show, right? And I, and that's fun. Uh, climate's working on that. We got a climate show, right? Um, Saturday is the Bernie event. Sunday morning, the Progressive Democratic Party of Oregon is going to go through a dry run of their first show, and then the following Sunday morning will be their first show. So Sunday's full, and I, I got to. This, this, and this is good. This is what I wanted. But I got to figure out how to balance that. So bottom line, what am I saying? What am I whining about? What I'm saying is, if there's anybody, anybody in my local area that wants to learn how to do what I do, portions of it, I'm a really good teacher. I actually have a lot of knowledge here. You just can't tell when I try to do it all at once. One-man bands are never really good, right? They can do a few tunes, and they look funny, and they're great to see at a circus. But you wouldn't want to go see a one-man band for like a three-hour concert. Like you would rush, right? Be like, okay, dude, it's the same shit, man. You can only do so much. But that's where I'm at. I need somebody who wants to learn. Come here, be with me in this place. What I have to offer is some knowledge. Um, working together, I can get you high. Um, I don't have any money to pay you. <laughs> There's all the food you can eat on this acre. You can take plants away, you know, but I need somebody who's got time and they have to have time to come do a rally or alert, you know, come with me to help work these shows. That's, and that's right now, that's an impossibility. Like, I don't think that exists. And I understand that. I mean, who the hell has that kind of time? I'm in a very unique, weird position and I get that. Right. So I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there that maybe there's somebody in Corvallis, Albany area that's like, yeah, that's me. I'm a trust fund kid who really wants to just do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just sounded crazy. I said, and to everybody who is doing stuff now, everybody in the Slack, I mean, you realize that the only reason I'm able to keep up with what's going on is because you guys are keeping the engine moving so nice. Ashley Terry's work doing cards and everybody else is doing their thing and 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 Marcus and Dennis and and, and Katie have all said we need to pitch in and do with with the awake and help put things in and we're we're gonna they're gonna build like a Euro perspective segment and 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 talk and and, and that's that's what needs to happen. That's great. Not right. to forget Laura was her no. absolutely great contacts. <laughs> yeah. Laura building every yeah, Laura building every <laughs> like the big we the people there's going to be like a thousand people who have seen it and it's got a giant super heavy interview this little bird does it all if I'm going to benefit these all the time the Simple as from here.
Barbara, yes. I mean, this is. I know what you're talking about. Just getting into as much local groups as, really as I can. I, I, that's that's the thing. Asking us for world peace. I don't get out. No more wars. And and as far as using Slack and stuff, and I'm looking at people say, I mean, it's it's you come into Slack. What what I need for people to do if they come into Slack is be aggressive about what they want to do to help. I I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a volunteer organizer. I can train you. I can I can put you in a role. I can get you involved with something. But I, I'm not an organizer. I'm not. I can't be the one reaching out. Right. So if you come to Slack, basically the general reason to be in there is to hang out in our BTV Slack and drop articles that are relevant and have discussion. If you want to be involved with anything else beyond that, you got to reach out. You got to let me know, or Marcus know, or or, or Laura Live and Good Night. Although Laura right now is so busy with booking people, yes, you, yeah. the, the, you guys got to see this. I mean, now I got to book this other guy. <laughs> this other guy. I'm trying to book Beto O'Rourke. I'm trying to have a communication with their person because we, we well, I, it's been difficult apparently. But th this is what we got going on already. And it just keeps going. We're, there are other people that we're talking to that aren't even on this list because we just don't have a money list. <laughs> I mean, it's... I, I almost feel like... I'm, I, I don't know. Like, I need to reform and think about it and, and, and redo what we're doing here because maybe this show becomes more important than I expected it to be and we focus effort there. I don't know. I don't know. That this is We're just at a different different time, and i, I got to figure it out, but uh, I don't want to spend, what does Ashley say, uh, you will receive infinite guidance from John if you are self-motivated to do it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, I won't ever shut up no, about giving you advice. No, that's for meant, God's uh, sure. No, John, he meant uh, when someone was trying to help you, uh, and to do further stuff oh, yeah. for the show, that is what yeah, he meant. I know. Uh, self-motivated. I know. Absolutely. I know, I, I, I get that. Thank you, Ash. I appreciate that. I mean, Ash has been doing a lot of stuff. I'm excited about the, the Sunday night show. Look, I'm, I'm more excited about the fact that we have shows that I'm just direct producing, whatever I call it, engineering producer, whatever. That's that's I, that's I what I wanted it to do. So I'm excited about that. It's it's I'm happy about that. These events, like the one tomorrow, has just got me freaked out because... Because I'm be, I'm a one man band with it. I'm gonna have Marcus and Dennis, and, and I'll have like support with people online. But I gotta be here, basically pulling levers and switches, and it's a little more complicated than a normal awake show, and it requires more um, diligence and professionalism than an awake show. <laughs> you know, I, I can't go. Excuse me, Milo. You know, I, but, but and anyway, this is cool. It is exploding, Bev, and it's very cool. And and uh, Keith. I haven't mailed anybody seeds because the last people that requested it need some addresses from Wesley, Naomi. Hello. You said you were gonna give me an address. And and if there's anybody else that needs seeds at this point that I that haven't received seeds, I've either forgotten or forgot. Yeah, forgot. And so just email me again, info at Bernie twenty sixteen dot TV and we'll try to get you seeds. I got lots of seeds. Happy to send you some. Get them started, please. All right. Moving on into other stuff. There's actually some things we should probably talk about. I'm going to make sure I covered all the important things here. Top speed.
Warriors, Virginia. We talked. Okay, so I just I just wanted to make it clear with Virginia that I I really messed up there. Thank you, Alan Parker. Although your delivery was a little harsh, but there it was. <laughs> and and I agree with you, Alan. I am not an interviewer. Okay, I one hundred percent. Bernie Sanders won't take 2020 off the table. Yes. Thank God. Thank all the gods in the world. Nothing is confirmed yet, but uh, no. it is good that he, said, that he says he's considering it. Yeah. He's, uh, come on. He's on early campaign right now. Yeah. Damn, Marcus, the sun just blasted you in the face. Holy shit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was raining all day long, and exactly now it's... Uh, the sun is shining directly into my face. <laughs> what, what that was Marcus. And it's not the sun, it's the Holy Spirit that's uh, getting hold of you. <laughs> you know, you know, my, my halo, my halo instead of my back head went to my front head. Okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, John Warren, this Virginian forgives you, Johnny. You want to know the saddest thing? Thank you, I appreciate that. You want to know the saddest thing? Marcus, I'm glad you're not a vampire. That's all I'm going to say, because, boy, you'd be toast. <laughs> <laughs> she looked nice. That sunlight looks so nice on you. See, everybody, that's natural light right there. Right? Okay. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a little bit too vampire -ish. It's a little bright, <laughs> and you could use a bit of a tan, but we'll just, it's been raining in Germany. <laughs> Listen, uh, I was born in Virginia, everybody. That was probably why I grabbed Virginia. I was born in Virginia, and I lived there until 1976. And then we moved to Colorado. So, yeah, I mean, I was a big John Denver fan, country boy, take me home. So <laughs> I was really, really extra embarrassed that I got that wrong, just because. So this Virginian says, I don't forgive myself for being a dumbass. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Mark is <Mark's> glowing. <laughs> <Looks like that's, laughs> that's, that's not a harp death ray. <laughs> Do you know what harp is? A harp is yes. What you, what you the music instrument which you're gonna no. play when you're on the cloud? No, 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 no. None of that kind of harp. Although I'm sure the U.S. would sell the harp missile. Is that? <laughs> so what is a harp? Thank you, Barb. My Andrew Feinstein interview was it was pretty good. I talk too much, but I I do that anyway. I Jilly Love, you're mentioning the harp missile. Mm. We're talking about the same thing. I saw a thing on this. This was the U.S. attempt to shoot a missile into space, a bullet into space to launch things. They actually did it. <laughs> they did it. I think I was watching a thing on it. It was the most ridiculous thing. They were trying to find a way to get an instrument in space to take them some telemetry guidance or do something, and they built a giant ass, like the largest dick extension you've ever seen, to shoot that thing in space. And they did it. It was just really loud and it caused a lot of problems for the residents of whatever island that they took over to do it. And, uh, you know. Anyway. Driving 81 is so boring in Virginia. 81 in particular? Driving? <laughs> Go 82. Is that more exciting? What? Please explain that. Come on, guys. Come to Germany. Use your poor autobahn where you can drive as fast as you like in some uh, sections. Ah, ah, yes, yes. We don't have an autobahn, unfortunately. Oh, you're, okay, so I'm getting different explanations on HARP. High Altitude Atmospheric Research Program. No, 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 and it's not that either, Julie Love, it's not that. No, this was another program from the uh, 60s. This was a program during the space program that I was watching on History Channel or something the other day. Look, somebody Google that and find it. You'll laugh your ass off at this thing. The remnants of that gun are somewhere. That's what it was. It was like, it was that show where they're looking at stuff that's falling apart. Why is this here? What was this? Right? Which is happening all over the place, so it's a pretty easy show to do. Robert, is that what you're talking about? High frequency active oral research program harp was it? I think that's what you're talking about. It was a big bullet. Anyway, not even the point. Bernie Sanders is saying he everything Bernie Sanders is doing, it looks like he's getting ready to run. So good for you, Bernie. And if you had any I, I've been calling him British Bernie for a while. Right? Out of out of just love and respect. But Jeremy Corbyn says, uh, I got my ideas from Bernie Sanders. So he really is the British Bernie. And the meme about it is great. 
uh, somebody dropped a meme, which was fantastic, and basically said, Bernie called him on the phone and said, hey, I wanted to talk to you about your ideas. Where did you get them? He's like, you. That's <laughs> two older yeah. socialists. <laughs> Great. Yes, you know, you know that I like uh, Jeremy Corbyn too, but there's one thing which really disturbs me about him. Yeah, he's he's still playing with the younger people, with the with the future of the young people, with Brexit concerns. He has no he has no clear position of or I, I sense he has a position that he follows Brexit Brexit as well as the conservatives do. And uh, if, if it comes to new elections, those who want to remain in, uh, in, in the European Union, they don't have no choice. They don't have no choice to vote for the Tories because they want a hard Brexit, nor they have the choice to vote Jeremy Corbyn because he wants a kind of soft Brexit. And this is disturbing. Huh? And in, in, in this point, in this point, he, he's not comparable to Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders is straight in every point what he's talking about. Interesting. So you don't, you don't trust. Uh, you don't trust. Uh, I would. I, I would. No, no, I would. I would expect from Jeremy Corbyn that he presents an alternative to the to the to the, to the Brexit at all. Because, it, you know, it was 52% to 48%. Of course, it was a win. But look, the country is divided. Right. And, if you, and if you look at the latest comment of, of, uh, oh. of the European Commission, uh, that, uh, that what, what they get from, from, from the UK is ridiculous. And uh, then there is Boris Johnson who say that if the European Union uh, uh, doesn't want what we suggest, then they can go whistle. And uh, uh, the European Com uh, Commission uh, replies to this uh, provocation. They say they don't hear any whistling. They only hear a clock ticking. And it is going to be horrible if, if it comes to a so-called uh, hard Brexit. It, it, it would ruin the UK within, within, a, within a year or two. So what do you think you should because do? They, should they revote? Could they revote? It, it's a, it's a, it is a good question. Uh, I, I would I would expect from him that that he would offer a new referendum, and it, it should it should happen very fast, you know, because the clock is ticking. And the March 20, 2019, it is over for for the UK, and they are standing alone. They have still no treaty. They should have an army uh, uh, going going around now. Uh, with people who are uh, uh, making contacts for deals, I hear nothing about it. They, are, they have now uh, access to 95 markets uh, through the U European Union. They would stand completely alone. Only they have a windy offer of Donald Trump. And, and he is a business guy and he knows that the UK has to take everything that he offers. They have no choice. And the situation, in my opinion, looks very, very, very bad for, for the UK. Oh, yeah, because, uh, <laughs> yes, Justin Bryce, I've seen the chant. It is amazing. Uh, it, I mean, he's not, every business deal he's tried to work so far has pretty much been a failure since his, uh, and I mean, the carrier deal screwed people. Uh, he's, I don't even know why the UK would consider him reasonable to deal with. At all. Why would they hedge their bets on that? He's going to be gone. I, I don't... It just blows my mind. Based, uh, based you, have to differ. you have to differ between the people and the politis, uh, politicians and the elites. You can't say that all Britain is uh, waiting for Trump. It's the conservatives and the one percenters in Britain who are waiting for it. Right, right. The same, the same bubble of non-reality. Uh, let's move on. And I see. Uh, I just I just see in, in chat, and I, I really like it that there are uh, some uh, some our viewers are uh, opposing to what I think, and it, it is absolutely okay if they do. It is. I can only repeat myself. It is only what what I see. It is only uh, through my perspective. Through my perspective, and uh, of course, it is it is not a generalized perspective for Germany or for everyone. But, but I but I have to I have to clear this. He, uh, he still uh, uses both options uh, uh, because uh, he, the, both, uh, both uh, parties or both uh, uh, Brexiters and, uh, and uh, Remainers give him votes. And if he, if, he, if he decides for one side, he has to feel that he loses votes. 
And this is a gamble. This is a kind of gamble. We don't have to forget this. And this, it, I, I absolutely agree with most of the points Corbyn says. Uh, but in this, uh, but compared to Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders is no gambler in this, in, in my perspective, you know. He is straight in what he says. He, he, the, 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 the voter knows what he gets from Bernie, you know. And this, and this is a small thing, a small thing of which disturbs me about Bernie. About Corbyn. Although I completely support him in many, many other things he says. Just to clear it up. All right, all right. Well, you're, you're fine. You're not bashing Corbyn. I, I, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Now, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what has to happen. And Invictus says it's not that simple. Um, I know he was, Invictus has been talking about saying you're wrong, and I, and I don't know enough of the details about it to really understand. All I can say is that um, at least you have. Corbyn, and at least it looks like at this point Corbyn may be in power and may at some point be gone from power. And whatever happens then, you've got somebody in office who seems to have at least some sense of morals and ethics, a conscious and is capable of speaking. So much better off than we are right now. Anyway, which email proceeds? Info at Bernie2016.tv. All right, I'm going to move on from that. But that was cool. We're going to talk about this is this is a, an, a historic moment. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. British Bernie, ground game. My last cop story. You ready? We're going to look at three cop stories really quick, and then I'm going to tell you I'm done with cop stories. I got nothing more to say. The first one is this one. Racist cops in Florida decided to pull over this black woman until they found out she was an attorney. Wait, you didn't see it. Right. Thank you. Your tag didn't come back. Never seen that before. We're good now. We ran a tag. I've never seen it before. A Florida tag. It's never come back to anything before. So that's the reason for the stop. I'm sorry. Oh, we run tags all the time, whether it's the traffic lights and, and that sort of stuff. That's how we figure out if you know cars are stolen and that sort of thing. Also, the, the windows were really dark. I don't have a tent measure, but that's another reason for the stop. Right. Yeah, one second. Actually, this isn't my car, but I can write my name down. If you like, <laughs> there you are. Have a good day. That's a racist cop who racially profiled the vehicle with a black woman in it and then found out that she was state attorney. I hope that cop loses his job. Next she can be a, she can she can be happy that she was not shot like the other officer. Absolutely. You know. This is uh, the story of a police were looking for a man wielding a machete weighing 150 pounds. They beat up and handcuffed a young girl without a machete on a bicycle who weighed less than 115 pounds. The reason she resisted arrest, that's why. They said she resisted arrest. I, I got nothing more on that one. Final story. Final story. It pisses me off. It is an officer beating a mentally ill woman, and I don't really know why. What did I do? 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 And that's my last call. Hang that police officer. Hang it. I'm sorry, Dennis. What? Um, oh gosh, I, I have to call myself my 
calm down myself when I see something like this. Yes. And I can really uh, understand every man and woman in America who got outraged about this, but I never seen something like this happen in my area. It's something not in my, in my imagination uh, when I see something like this, but hey, guys. I'm so sorry that you guys have so stupid cops in America who don't respect you, don't recognize your uh, rights, and so on. So, yeah. Thank you, Dennis. That's my last cop story. I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing objective to say about cops. I'm not their friend. I've, I've got no respect, no trust. I'm done. The only thing I can think of now when I think of cops is violence, rage, hatred, outrage, disgust. I got nothing. There are no good cops. I don't know where they are. I, I can't even rely on Mike Butler anymore. He's there. He's doing his job with his people. But they're a little bubble. I don't see those bubbles. I see that. Thugs that have been given power by the people they serve, beating the shit out of the people they serve, murdering the people they serve. There have been 23 murders this month by cops. 23 murders. That's more than most unindustrialized countries in a fucking year. Man, it's like, like there's, there's, it's, it's ridiculous. Our cops are out of control. They don't abide by the same laws that they hold us to. They treat us like they're some kinds of gods or knights that get to do as they please. And my message is publicly to all cops. I'm your enemy. I don't trust you. I don't respect you. And I will not listen to your authority. I will not abide by it. And if I ever see a cop doing that to another citizen, I will take it upon myself to relieve you of that and end you. My fists will come out and I will be violent against any officer I see doing something like that. I will not stand for it. And no human being should have to stand for that. I am not a friend of the police until I see the police actually do their fucking jobs and serve and protect the people that pay their wage. And I don't see that. All I see is red. That's my last cop story. Because I'll never be able to cover a cop story again, good or bad, objectively. I'm done. They burned the bridge. There's no forgiveness. I'm done. Somebody else is going to have to cover the police. Somebody else is going to have to tell the good stories. Which is fine. Because I don't see them. And I know you guys don't want me covering them anyway. <laughs> so, we're moving on. We're moving on to the positive stuff. Just know that we're going to have to have a war with our police at some point. Because the courts back the cops. That scene right there happened a while ago. And the cop, back at work, that video was released just recently. Imagine had we never seen that. Makes that guy even more disgusting. Makes me want to see his head slammed up against the wall. Makes me just think violent, horrible thoughts. Which makes me just as bad as that piece of shit. So I have to back away from my own health. But God help the cop that I see abuse a citizen. That is my public threat to all police. Here's one of those rare cases where the court recognizes that bullshit's bullshit. Remember the code pink woman that was arrested for laughing when they stated that Jeff Sessions had actually done a fair and balanced job as a whatever? So the, the judge tossed this out after the prosecutor tried to say that, oh, she did much more than laugh. Horrible, and we can't have that in our... It, it's, it's, they called it, it, you know, ruining the decorum of the legal system or whatever. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're all a bunch of rat finks that buy and sell people's lives. And you're worried about somebody violating procedure in a fucking courtroom? It's unbelievable hypocrisy from one of the most corrupt judicial systems in the history of the world. Anyway, the judge said, bullshit, get her out of here. So charges were dropped. That's nice. 
there should have an additional amendment, in my opinion. You have freedom of speech, you need freedom of laughter. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you would think they're the same. You would think. You would. Anyway. Uh, just real quick on uh, mentally ill patients. I didn't even know you could put mentally ill inmates in solitary confinement, much less keep them in there. I've been in solitary confinement. I was thrown in there for three days back when I was somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25. I actually don't know. I was really wasted on drugs, and it was a deal that was worked out. I was tossed in jail, Rappahoe County. I was in three days of solitary, and I almost lost my mind. Actually, I kind of probably did. It was the most inhumane thing that had ever happened to me, other than getting the shit beat out of you by a cop, but that was in Gilpin County. Um, I couldn't imagine being mentally ill and being in solitary. I can't imagine any human being. Solitary is inhumane, folks. Keeping a person locked in a cell by themselves for 22 hours a day is inhumane. If you want to take somebody and turn them into an ugly being or something that just wants to kill themselves, that is the best way to do it. If we're going to have restorative justice at all, if we want to reintegrate any of these people into our society at all, you can't be putting them in solitary. I don't care what they've done. That's horrific. It turns a human into just an animal that doesn't give a fuck about other human beings because they've been separated from other human beings. They're making matters worse. And the idea that we put mentally ill people in solitary confinement is abhorrent and disgusting and makes me want to do even more violent things to the people that run this fucking prison system. We have lots of things to fix in our legal and prison systems. We really do. We really do. On to more happy things. Ground game stuff, for fuck's sake. Good. Right? Because we do have some good stuff. And you guys saw some, uh, you guys saw some of that. This was, this is kind of cool because it was sent to us by the ghetto people. Because we're talking to them, right? So this just was a press release. This game, they, hey guys, mention this. So we're going to mention this. This is a video that uh, Beto did talking about the campaign money that they raised, which is a lot of money. Here we go. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Look, I just heard some great news about the campaign. We raised more than two million dollars over the last three months for more than forty-five thousand unique donations. Most of them from Texas, but every one of them wanting to take back our state, take back the Senate, and take back this country. And not a single dime came from PACs or special interests or corporate donors. It all came from people like you. So I just wanted to stop and say thank you, uh, tell you I'm looking forward to working with you going forward, and I'm also looking forward to celebrating a terrific victory in 2018. Cool. cool. And I'm also looking forward to having him on We The People as soon as we can coordinate a date. I'm not sure why that's so hard. I, anyway, exciting to have him on there. <laughs> that, that little little bit of a, oh, hey, I didn't see it there. That's a, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> anyway. Remember, what are you talking about, Mark? I'm just looking at you guys' comments. Remember the police busting cameras before the months, the edibles? Not sure what you're talking about there. Not sure what you're talking about. Anyway, glad we moved on to positive stuff. Let me, let me make sure I, I didn't miss anything in my rundown here. Beto raises butt up here. You want to see the card? Yeah. Marcus edited the card today, everybody. You want to tell him what you did, Marcus? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I, I I did only uh, my minor changes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this damn this damn motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody likes my use of commas or my lack of commas, period, and my use of the capital letters on everything, which I just consider titling on an event card. Everybody else wants to make it a correct sentence, like Ashley Terry, Ashley. Anyway. And John called me a uh, grandma Nazi. I did. I did, which is wholly inappropriate. Remember I said that the use of that is just inappropriate now that we have actual Nazis it's, happening it's also, again? Yes, it is also near a common in Germany, this expression. Oh, so that's acceptable? You can say that? 
Yeah, you, you, you cannot say this, but it is known here. You oh. know, people, who, are, who are picking, who are picking, or who are checking the details, and who are, you know, guys right. like me, for example. You don't say grammar Nazi because you you can't say that. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, all right. So, uh, would you do th this? The next story is kind of interesting because it's would you do this instead? So I'm asking you all out there right now, Americans, drinkers, American drinkers. Would you do this instead? 73% of Democrats would give up drinking for Trump impeachment. I thought that was quite a commitment. Right? I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a big commitment. There's also a, a number of 31% of Republicans would do the same. Let me tell you, John, 73%, they all were completely drunk. When they say that, when they said that. Well, of course, of course. Actually, I have my numbers wrong. 70% of Republicans would give up alcohol for Trump's impeachment, and 31% of Republicans would give up drinking if it meant the media stopped writing negative things about President Trump. How do you stop writing facts? And, and, and you're right, Marcus. They were probably all drunk when they said that. I'd give it up. They've got weed now. See, that's that. Maybe. <laughs> but, but, but the I question is, would you guys give up alcohol if it meant the impeachment of Trump, knowing that Pence would come in. Think about that. Pence is in. You can't drink anymore. Trump's out. Was that really worth it? I, I don't, I, not for me. And I don't even drink. I wouldn't even make that change. You were like, give up weed. I'm like, ah. no. You'd have to put Bernie in office, tell me all of the establishment is gone, right? and I have to get my floating command center. You give me all those things, and I'll quit weed, maybe. No, still would. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. That, that, that's... That just, my, my question to you is, instead of giving up drinking to make it happen, would you just join your local government? Would you be active in government instead of quitting drinking? You could drink and be active in local government. Bonus, most people do now. So, why don't you just do that instead? If you're willing to, to give up something that you enjoy, like alcohol, assuming these people enjoy alcohol, maybe they all hate it. Maybe it was 73% of it. Maybe they're all out AA. I don't know. But if, you, if, you, if you're willing to give up something, give up something. Why aren't you willing to do something? Is it easier to give up than to do? I'm just curious. Take that. Take that. We're going to watch that clip that Darcy put together because it's great. And we're going to listen to what Paula Jean had to say about uh, how she's going to be Joe Manchin, because she's, I mean, unless, unless we really do, like, get it together and we can raise, like, $10 million or so, which I think is probably, we're going to need $10, $20 million for her, you know, she's going to have to, we, we are going to have to help her. We're going to have to not just give up drinking, we're going to have to go out or maybe drink and then go out and help her get elected, knock on doors, talk to people, that's, she needs votes, and she's going to get votes over Joe Manchin, not by raising a bunch of money and putting out ads, but by knocking door to door in West Virginia and getting people to go, oh yeah, I want to vote for you, not Joe. So, listen to her. Of the people. I'm not taking large donations. You know, we're, we're building a movement of people with brand new Congress that is not taking corporate money. People are going to invest in a candidate that's going to serve them. There's a clear difference between being a friend of the coal industry and being a friend of a coal miner. Who's going to clean up the coal Your second top donor is Milan, and his daughter's the CEO of Milan, so you can connect the dots. Look at the opioid abuse in West Virginia. He's been bitching that he was going to combat that. 455 pills to get to give to every man, woman, and child. And then his second top donor is Milan. And his daughter's the CEO of Marlin. So, you know, what is he going to do? How are you planning on beating Joe Manchin in 2018 when we know you're probably not going to be able to raise the tens of millions of dollars that he's got? We've got to do it a different way. What are you planning on doing? I don't need money. I need votes. I don't care about the money. And you know what? We have we have the ability, like we're doing tonight, to raise voices. To, to have, you know, have outreach with social media now. We do have that advantage that we didn't used to have. You know, and, and people are uniting all over West Virginia. And, and, you know, voices are being raised, and we're going to continue to power build, and we're going to continue to unite. 
and we're going to build a powerful campaign because this is not my campaign. This campaign is for West Virginia. <laughs> Nice. Oh man, it even had the Uphill Media logo on it too. Yeah. That's nice. That's, that's really well done. Thank you, Darcy. That's Darcy with that home activism. I thought I was starting here. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's cool. And, and I love what Paula Jean had to say. That's working together. That's, that's, you know, we, we do the interview. Somebody else takes time to do editing, cut it up. Uh, yeah. So that's really cool. Well, thank you, Chris Bailey. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I worked hard on that interview, even though I didn't know my states. Uh, and I did not know Milan EpiPen. I didn't make that connection there, but I thought that was a great opportunity for her to explain it all, right? And I didn't know the, the daughter. Did you think about this for a second? I should have said this then. I, I, I was too busy like going back and forth between shots, which is one of the reasons why things get bad. But uh, when Joe Manchin told... Jenk Uger on TYT that he didn't know his donors. And Milan is the second donor, and his daughter is the CEO. He doesn't know his own daughter. Or that she donated? I don't know. Just curious. Robert, <laughs> she does have laser eyes. She does. Oh my god. When she's talking to when she's talking to man, she, when she's saying who's gonna who's gonna clean up the water and she, I mean, she's like frying him. Ah, I get most TV. Ah, okay. No, I get yeah, no, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think it's what she. Yeah. Uh, I just and and Melissa H. Just to back up a few seconds. One of my favorite typos ever is when you go to say doing in chat and it comes out dong. <laughs> <laughs> How you dong? If if the if the say you jump, if eyes could kill. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If, if eyes could kill, we would give uh, uh, Paula Jean a license, and she'd be double, and, <laughs> double and Paula. And you know what, John? Mm. Uh, when, when I just saw uh, the Apple Media logo, I would like to have a T-shirt with that logo in big, with a big logo on it. I think that would what be great. Uh, who's, who's what do you guys in chat say? <laughs> I think it's great. You're gonna we'll, Ashley can get you that that logo. Cool. If you want it, if you want to do that, I. <laughs> everybody was like, "Hey, what you got there?" <laughs> she was trying to pass it off to something else. Like, eh, this is, you know. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> oh my god! I, I just thought that was funny. Here you go. Here, we're, listen to Bernie. We need a Bernie bomb. Just. Here it is. That, that's. Oh my gosh. That's what we need as an intro to these. We need a Bernie bump. Somebody sounds like they're cutting the line on a mirror. <laughs> the Trump supporter is drawn to at this point if they look at the policies and how it impacts their lives because he has his base. It's there. He has his base, but I think because that base is shrinking, the more people learn about his policies. Uh, but the base is that he ran an effective campaign and he said, you know, I'm going to take on the establishment. And I'm going to stand up for the working class of this country that has so long been ignored. And in my view, the Democratic Party has not done a good job at standing up for the working class of this country. And I think he captured that sentiment Why not? pretty effectively. Where, where, where did the Democratic Party go wrong? Well, for the last many, many years, the Democratic Party has been spending too much money, too much time raising money from its wealthy friends, turning its back on rural America turning its back on the working class, talking about deregulating Wall Street, uh, talking about uh, uh, not paying attention to the needs of people whose uh, standard of living has been in decline. Now, Obama, in my view, did a reasonable job. We were better off after his eight years economically than we were when he came in. But the fact of the matter is, for 40 years, the middle class of this country has been in decline. We're looking at massive levels of income and wealth inequality. 52% of all new income today is going to the top 1%. All right, you have large multinational corporations making billions, not paying a nickel in taxes. The average American understands that working two or three jobs, all of the wealth and income is going to the people on top. Who's talking to their needs? Who's going to Kentucky and Mississippi and Alabama and saying, we're going to stand with you, we're prepared to take on corporate America and Wall Street and the big money. Uh, I was going to ask. There's a lot more that's going on there than, than we're talking about.
because what's happening with Morning Joe and what's happening with Bernie Sanders on MSM right now is, is the signals of shift that, for the most part, is going to benefit us. Right? And that is that the, there's more people in the United States of America right now watching TV that are pissed off at the government, pissed off at what's going on, and interested in what Bernie has to say, that Bernie brings the ratings, which means progressive brings the ratings. So you're going to hear more and more of this talk because it's oppositional to the government. It's what brings the ratings. doesn't really matter what Morning Joe thinks. doesn't really matter what the network thinks. The network's like, we need this. This is going to keep an argument going. And so we're going to have an opportunity through MSM to sway more people over to the message. And that's, that's really what's going on there. That's exciting to see. What do you think, Marcus? You're, you're skeptical. I'm Dennis? very skeptical about it because uh, they, they, they didn't change. I, I, what, what has changed? They are now doing good journalism because it's against Trump. But I bet as soon as Trump is gone and another one is there, and uh, Bernie would, uh, would be a clear yeah. danger for corporations and uh, their sponsors, the narrative would change the same minute, and we would we would see exactly what we did in the past during the primaries. But but the people are used to that now. They're they're not going to be forgiving on the ratings. They they know how to dump a station. They know how to kill the station's ratings. Right? I mean, but, CNN's but ratings are in the toilet. They, right now. I, I I heard I heard it, I read it di different that they are now as Trump as Trump is president, uh, the ratings for MSNBC and CNN are raising. Uh, Except, especially with uh, Rachel Meadows, she's now number one. Now, as uh, that other idiot from Fox, uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly is gone. C CNN is doing poor the last stats I saw. CNN was doing poorly. Uh, MSNBC may be doing lovely, but you know that's. I was just talking about CNN. The 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 difference here is that they're talking. How much air Bernie Sanders has had more airtime now than he ever got the primaries. What's the shame? That's a, that's a shame. And he's saying what he wants to say. They're not. The, look, the difference is in how they're talking to him. They're letting him get out his full talking points. They're not arguing bullshit with him. They were arguing bullshit with him. If, if you go back a year, or if you go back into the primaries a year, uh, and, and listen to them, all they come back to is, but you're a socialist. You know, people call you socialist. You know, people don't really like the word socialist. Are you a socialist? What does that mean you're being socialist? They were just pounding the shit out of it. They, that's not even, they can't even talk about that anymore. The ratings go down, you mentioned that word, because people don't give a shit anymore. They're like, yeah, Bernie Sanders, socialist, we get it, move on. You know, I think, I think what their profits concern, uh, the, the, the media, though they, are, they might lose ratings, are exactly the same like the DNC. Right. They don't want to give this to a, a social democrat. And well, they, are, they are not allowed to do it. And w w what is the, the guarantee? They, they, in the primaries, they, they, be, uh, they, uh, um, they treated Bernie like shit. No question. Now they are more friendly. This doesn't guarantee that uh, short, uh, when the next primaries are going on, that they wouldn't change them again and, uh, and uh, treat, him, treat him like shit again. I don't trust I don't you. Trust you don't, the, you, the don't, you don't put your... I don't. He's getting the airtime. They're, do, they're. I guess. I guess. I, you, you're worried about what could happen in the future, but they're having the conversation now. They had all these conversations with Trump. Think about what it did for Trump. They gave him airtime. They listened to what he had to say. They had all the conversations. They're turning on him now. Good point. Okay. Good point. I'm just saying. You know, you, you, you can argue that, but right now, let's take what we get. In war, we take what we get. And Bernie knows how to work that battlefield. I'm just, I'm not saying it's a great. Great. I'm not saying it, Ooh, look it, at it. If, it, if it. if it could work out for Bernie like it did for Trump, I'm I'm totally fine with it. But uh, my, my my trust in the mainstream media is very very limited. From after what I saw, what I witnessed in, in, during the primaries, because for me as a as a German as a European, it, it was it was unbelievable. I saw right. Bernie get, getting more and more uh, 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 attention and uh, more and more crowds behind crowds behind him and. Seeing suddenly that the complete game is is uh, is, uh, is pushed against him, is uh, that he had no chance. It was for me. I am used to fair elections. It was for me yeah. absolutely. I couldn't understand it. You know, I was right. I was completely under shock.
It's like watching a cop being this, a mentally ill. This is why I'm fucking still here. I, I, I know. That's why we're all. I agree. I agree. Uh, it's, it's why. It's why we're all still. I mean, that's that's absolutely the point. Uh, uh, I want to just back up on some comments real quick. Um, uh, what did you say, Paula? You said uh, you agree. It's gonna it, that it will help. Um, listen, think, think of them as mercenaries. I, 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 I don't. I don't trust them either. Right? Think of them, Think of MSM as, as they're mercenaries. They're just propaganda agents, and they're going to work for whoever brings the ratings to the yard. Right. Whatever brings in the advertiser dollars, and if right now the advertiser dollars are going to come from the progressive side of the road, that's that's what I'm saying. If advertisers, the, the advertisers are shifting here and there because they need to support social causes or they lose their customer base. Do you see this? Do you see how this has been positioned? That we, through social media and our consumer purchasing and negative attacks on businesses, have forced businesses to leave programs, forced businesses to change their positions, forced businesses to do better. Because we can destroy them in social. The moment their stock value starts to drop because we have killed them negatively in social, they start deciding they have a fucking moral compass. And if we can get advertisers, progressive advertisers, to advertise on channels, MSM channels, because Bernie Sanders is showing up on that channel, right? I just, I just want you to remember how much airtime Trump got, how little airtime Bernie got, and what's happening right now is that all the airtime for Trump is negative, 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 negative. There's no positive coming out. Even Fox News is having a hard time making a positive story because they're being attacked, <laughs> right? We have a very different situation. It's it's uh, <laughs> my propaganda brings all the boys to the yard exactly. Go <laughs> Beyonce is nice looking woman. <laughs> we're gonna get to the Trump Trump ogling Mrs. Macron. Uh, we're we're gonna get to that because that was I thought the best. That's just the icing. It sets up everything for today. It really does. <clears throat> and the media will, I'm sure the media will attack Bernie again in 2020. But at that point, at that, listen, this is the best. So, so, so let's say from here through midterms, the media does nothing but help Bernie Sanders and the progressive movement. It's good for ratings and stations are going to shift around and pivot and change. Okay. And then we head into the real active season going into the next presidency and we start to see these networks shift and, oh, well, we got to, you know, work for the corporations. We got to start supporting this and that and the other Trump team or whatever's going on. Pence, Team Pence, you know, uh, wh whatever scary thing that looks like. And and yes, we will see the media shift again. But at this point in time, they'll have a very different viewer base, and they'll have a very different group of Americans. They will have a whole bunch more information that has been fed to them for quite some time. They will have gone through a midterm elections, which hopefully will see some sweeping changes across the country. And there will be a lot of different people in power. Think about that. By the time they're ready to turn on the progressive movement again, the progressive movement and the people that are watching MSM and thinking about the progressive movement are going to be huge. Huge. You've got Joe Scarborough, an independent. That is going to help shift the dial. There's, no matter how much we dislike them and how mercenary they are in their desire for profit and ratings, which is really all they care about, they're going to lose on that, and they know they're going to lose on that when they start battling Bernie Sanders and the progressive movement that they're propping up right now. Yeah. To be to be uh, to be kind of fair to Joe Scarborough, in my perception, he was among all those uh, news mercenaries. He was one of those guys who treated uh, Bernie during the primaries with a kind of respect, with much more respect, yes. in my opinion, than uh, uh, than all the others. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and so I'll give him, I'll give him a little bit of credit. Uh, we'll we'll see how, how far, how far he goes as an independent. Uh, and the uh, morning Joe was the, f was the first, uh, were the first who said the uh, Democrats rigged the election. So therefore, I give, I give them credit. Hmm. But we don't have to forget they, they made Trump. They did. MSNBC. They, also yeah. the product of MSNBC. Uh, yes, they yeah. helped make Trump. Oh, you've got you're, you're, you're giving me ratings. Or what are these ratings? Uh, you know who? Uh, Battles number one. Hannity, MSNBC's last word with Lawrence Donald. Fox News and MSNBC finished in a near tie last night. Interesting. I didn't know. I, I, 
Matter was number one. Hannity is number two. Hannity. I thought Hannity. Hannity. Anyway, whatever. Scarborough can get away with saying the truth; they won't fire him. That's how can be a journalist can get away with telling the truth and not get fired? No. That's right. Please. On to the next terms. Springfield Progressive, you're absolutely true. Maine just passed ranked choice voting, and we and I, I had talked about that a while back. I think I talked about it when it was at the assembly. We were waiting to see if it was going to go all the way through, and that's fantastic. I think that's fantastic. Here, here we're, we're moving on into, into some some. This is this is a little bit of the reason why mainstream media is having some butt hurt, guys. It's because they have to adapt to social media. They have to adapt to the fact that things can just come out. This is hilarious. There was a journal. I mean, it's sad for the journalist. This guy who's been working on the, the Don Jr. email story for a year, trying to get the information, and, and he tweets. He tweeted it out when Don Jr. basically spilled the beans. Says, Jared Yates Sexton, I worked on this story for a year, and he just tweeted it out. And he was... You know, I would be definitely sad about it myself if I had worked really hard on the story. And, uh, and and then Don Jr. just blurts the whole thing out. Yeah, I had these emails. Here they are. Talk to people. And what happened, what I love about the Internet, is they turned it into a meme. <laughs> Here's Jessica Roy. I worked on this story for a year, and he just tweeted it out. And the tweet is Donald uh, Trump Jr. I've never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. What a lovely quote. Anyway, I just thought that was hilarious. What this tells media, times have changed. Times have changed. The, the internet, social media, the, our ability to communicate with each other and our ability to get information off the net is changing. Corrupt people's ability to hide stuff, mostly. Right? And that's, that's, it's making it unpredictable as well. That's, that's what I love about this, is that we have more power in our hands with the internet, then I think we and the government realize, although some people in the FCC probably realize that. Anyway, just keep that in mind. So, yeah. It's a good tool. Imagine what happens when that thing becomes sentient. We're on the climate, guys. We really are. It's the last, like, ten minutes. That's it. Th this next, this is, this is important, though. We've been talking about these stories coming out. I, I think I have a different opinion than a lot of mainstream climate folks. And I just want to get your, I want to take your temperature on this. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of articles come out, you know, dissing the New York, was it the New York Post article, New York Times article about uninhabitable planet. Basically, there's a lot of scientists and a lot of other articles doing a big pushback on the doomsday scenario articles that are coming out about climate change. And I don't understand that at all. I don't, I don't understand that at all. We've worked so hard for decades, most of these climate scientists for decades, just to get people to listen. And now that you've got people listening and putting out some scary articles about it, which really, in my opinion, are more close to true than your more conservative, quiet versions, you are telling people to relax and not get so excited. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Everybody. Here's, here's this is Noah. This is, this is the government. I, I don't understand this. That Noah avoids mentioning human activity in release on soaring greenhouse gases. They said they put it in another supplemental thing. I don't understand what's going on here. I just don't. Like, two years ago, it was a planetary crisis. Now we're being told, but don't push the doomsday scenario. Make up your fucking minds. It is a doomsday scenario, folks. There are people dying right now. There's species going extinct right now. Why, why would we want to pamper this? And the, the cover card says it says Al Gore named it in 2006. He said it was an inconvenient truth, and we still consider it inconvenient. It's been decades. We're still looking at it like it's inconvenient. No, it's the death of our species. And some people are like... That's, I, that's, that makes me uncomfortable. That's too inconvenient for me, for you to be pushing these doomsday scenarios. Can we back off a little bit and make it a little more pleasant for the rest of America? Because, because we in America need to just have it nice and cozy and calm, and it needs to go like Hollywood, and it needs to be like TV. You know, that when we combat climate change, it's going to be like the movie Armageddon, 
and Bruce Willis, and, and, and he's going to drop in, and we're going to shoot a space shuttle up there, and they're going to fucking save everything, and Elon Musk will wear a cape. In the meantime, millions of people are dying right fucking now, dying now from climate change, from our actions decades ago. But for some reason, we, we, don't, we can't be bothered with the doomsday scenario. We have to relax and calm down. You're out of your fucking mind, and you're inhuman. If you really think we should just relax about these scenarios and not mobilize on climate or not try to push it as hard as we can or as fast as we can, the idea from a scientist that we're just going to pull it out at the end, that's disgusting. It's unconscionable. You're saying it's okay for however many people have to die now while we wait for us to get our shit together. That's, that's, that's disgusting. I can't believe you would even think that. Any scientist that's that, that's going along with that, and there are scientists that have said that. I fuck you. I want to save everybody now, and we could. That's the thing. We could. We have all the resources, all the power, all the money, all the. We have the people. When India can plant. However many fucking amount of trees, they planted some insane amount of trees. They've done this twice. They get a whole bunch of their people together, and they all do something together. It's not that hard to do. If we can put people in space, we can all get together and save our fucking planet. And let's do it now. It may be inconvenient, but a whole lot less of people will die. Does that mean anything to anybody? And it will, and it will get uh, much more inconvenient, as you say, because uh, I saw the latest numbers uh, from Africa, and uh, with the year 2050, the population in Africa will be doubled. So right now, you can with climate change, with uh, with refugees, uh, with the instable situations in some African uh, countries, uh, it it would be a big run and. Uh, if, if we don't change, every one of us has to change. And, uh, we, we cannot go on yeah. like this. And, uh, yeah. Agreed, Mark. It's just, uh, yeah. You, look, we're preaching yeah. to the choir here. You know we are. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. All you in the audience, you know this stuff. I know. We're just sharing frustration. You know, I, it's, it's, it's hard to know that we could do it, and we work hard every day to try to make it happen. Um, it's just frustrating yeah. and 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 no 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 you're not a lost cause john warren because you're addicted to meat i like meat too we're omnivores it's about developing an infrastructure for all of humanity that allows us to do animal husbandry in a ethical fashion right there, there's ways to get back to that we don't have to give things up we have to evolve we we haven't evolved to the number of us living on this planet that we needed to. We, we have not cared for each other that well, sadly. And, and we need to do that, all of us, together. That's, that's, that's been the problem. All of us, like, like not just humans, humans and animals. This is, I, this is Marcus dropped the story, and I, I had seen this and thought about running. I'm glad he dropped it. But um, Raven, Evermore, I love that. Ravens can plan for the future. <clears throat> they did some freaky experiments with ravens. And, you know... Most animals, that, that whole thing about bird brain, that's bullshit, by the way. Birds are really fucking smart. Oh, yeah. Birds are really smart. And they can imprint on a human being. Geese can imprint on a human being and have a relationships like dogs and cats. We had a goose that came by and hung out with us when I, when I lived on the river, the Willamette River, and we would throw it cherries from the boat, catch them in his mouth. It was a, anyway, back to Ravens. So, most animals, like some, they can store stuff for the winter, like they store a bunch of nuts and fruits or whatever, hide it somewhere, and that's pretty typical. That's animal behavior. But ravens can think ahead. Think, hmm, if you're giving me objects, and I've learned what these objects do, which they can learn what they do, in relation to storing things, they can choose an object, they can wait and barter with something they have for another object, knowing that's what they want. That's some pretty advanced thinking behavior. That's something that, that we've only seen in human beings and great apes. And now ravens. That's freaky shit. That's cool. That's 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 brain development beyond what we understand. We understand so very little about brains, especially our own. 
if you think about evolution, my, my big thing about that was like, we're, we're now learning so much about how animal brains work and how our own brain works. And really, if you think about it, all we're at right now is a particular level of development within a species. If we, if we know how to work, look at our genetic imprint now, we're going to be able to, I think, forward that at some point. Where does our brain development go? Where does that take us? God, I'd love to be alive around to see that. That'd be neat. Not going to happen. Absolutely. The, the, the interesting point about the raven story about their, their care for their future is that in the ancient mythologies, the raven is described as an animal which can foresee the future. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It is. It is. And that's, I want, you, you, it's so true. You wonder if that's, you know, is that what they were thinking of? Is that, is that, is that why? Because they recognize that association, the raven's able to do that? Is that just from observation? I, I don't know, but uh, the business, the mythical, uh, the raven is a mystical symbol for for the foreseeing of things. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, I know. And, and, and I into the future. Yeah. Well, and, and this, oh. and this, this, this the science thing uh, pr proves it uh, perfectly, you know. So we're saying because of science, raven, we know that ravens can see the future. Got it. Okay. If, 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 <laughs> if they can plan the future, <laughs> you, you know, you, ravens are you, psychic. I switch tell me, Mark. <laughs> in ancient times, uh, ravens were the pets of uh, Odin. Yeah, oh yeah, yes. I know. So, so, I know. so, so therefore, he was the uh, godfather of all the Nordic uh, gods, and uh, he could see the future and so on. And then um, there was a saying at that time: when you see a uh, when you see a crow or a raven near you, you uh, he, he wants to tell you something from Odin directly. So yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Here we go. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in that stuff, so. <laughs> Very cool. I'm stuck about that. <laughs> uh, no, hey, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons. I know who Odin is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people, oh, hang on, hang on. We're going to move on. we got a couple of things. We're like a few minutes left. So, uh, yeah. I, this is a drone you'll like. I like this drone. If you're ever dying, this is a concept drone. I hate that when they make concepts. In that drone. This would be great if they put this together. This is a drone that is an ambulance. All right. This drone basically comes in. You can load a, a person on a gurney. You know, you load a person in there with, with a, a, a medic, and it just flies them right to the hospital. The really cool thing about it, though, is one operator somewhere remotely could fly a bunch of drones. games. <laughs> there you go. We'll foresee this being used in that. So there you go. I thought that was kind of cool. Absolutely. And, and here, this is actually bigger news than I think people understand. This was, this is the Hyperloop first test successful test of a Hyperloop sled in a vacuum maglev function. This was based on designs and information that Elon Musk handed off to three companies in 2013 saying make it. And they did. So check this. Sorry guys, that was
was a mess. Hang on. Scott just tried to call me in the middle of a show, and I totally bipped that up because I was trying to shut it up. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> He's trying to get ready uh, for this event. We need to have a call today and discuss what's going on at the, the event tomorrow. So, uh, I know, guys. Sorry about that. Again, there are too many things happening right now, and that's why we're having a hard time with this. I may take out another day of a week just so I can deal with what's going on. I'm thinking we're going to go to, like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm going to think about it. But it's, it's just, <laughs> again, having a hard time keeping it all together. Scott needs to talk to me, obviously. We're almost done with this. But it's too good to go out without the uh, without the end song and the last thing we need to look at here. Let's find it. There we go. Give me a second. I, this is forty five. Just being a. <laughs> if you look up the term oval, it means to stare at somebody with desire. To look at somebody with desire, right? Here's the President of the United States ogling Mrs. Macron and then telling Mr. Macron, yeah. Something happened with President Trump. Comments he made that have now been posted on the Facebook page, I'm told, of President Macron. Let's listen. <laughs> Joining me now, Matt Miller, a former spokesperson for the Justice Department. And nah, we're not going to listen to them talk about it. it. It's just gross. It's like a high school jock with a firm boner. Yeah, your wife's hot, man. That's basically what he said. I want to do your wife. When you ogle somebody right in front of them with their husband right there and then say, yeah. You're basically saying, I'm thinking about your wife in that way. By the way, I'm the President of the United States, and I'm visiting your country, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it goes even deeper, John. Yes? Uh, because he didn't, he didn't say, uh, uh, you, you have a good-looking wife or something like this. He says, you're in a good shape. Your wife is in a good shape. Yeah, I know, I know. It goes in good shape. Oh, no, 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 no. And he left out the rest of the line. And the rest of the line is for her age. Oh, did he really say that? Yes. No, 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 no. This is this is uh, this is how you formulate a sentence. Like uh, she, she's in a good shape for her age. She, she didn't. He didn't say she looks. She looks beautiful. Well, she looks good. She said she, she's in good, in a good shape. Well, he did say. Then you can imagine how the sentence goes on. You know. Well, yeah. What was he putting on that? I, I get what you're saying. He's just a piece of shit. But, but <laughs> you're going all grammar on him. You're going all grammar on him, which is understandable. Right, in, right. Invictus is, is saying what you said. He meant she's in good shape for her old age. Yes. Exactly what you're saying. Of, of, well, yes. of course it was. It was, a, it was an insult. No matter how it was, it was, a, it was, it was gross. It's gross. You know, Jesus. I just here's the here's the yes, ageism with with his sexism. Uh, here, here's here's the best part about that, everybody. So. They, I just caught this video from Euronews, and hopefully we won't get slammed for it. It should be all right. We'll see. You know, they do that silly stuff when a, one diplomat goes to another diplomat's place, and they go watch plays and see stupid things and do stuff to make everybody feel special about themselves. Here they go to, uh, they're, they're on the Chance Elise. This says, Du Daft Punk sur the Champs Elysees pour le 14 juillet. There's my shit fuck French right there. Okay. Um, basically, it's the French national French band of France, wherever the hell they are, uh, is playing a Daft Punk song, which, which would be okay. I mean, that's an interesting thing to do. Um, and you got Trump and Macron sitting there watching this. Trump's hair is hilarious. I know his his face is basically just. Dumb. But look at his hair. His hair flops up and down. It's 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 hilarious. Nothing else moves, but his hair is just bouncing up and down. Macron's like looking at it like it's some thing, right? He's just trying to enjoy it and watch it. What we just saw was Trump ogling Macron's wife. This song though is called 
get lucky. It's about getting laid. I'm not sure they actually understood that, that this whole song is basically about going out to fuck and staying up all night to fuck. Anyway. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning, my time, for an awesome Bernie Sanders event in Iowa. Scott's already knocking on the hangout. We're getting out of here. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. You're welcome.